back here on First Things First, time for Say What? What? <laughs> I tried to freestyle and it backfired. The temperatures are expected to be frigid Sunday when the Chiefs host the Patriots. Bill Belichick was asked about it yesterday. We're going back to what we know. Say What? Bill, the forecast for Sunday is temperatures in the single digits, wind chill below zero. How does that impact preparations for the game and perhaps yeah, we're playing out the ready game? for the Chiefs, whatever it is it is. Do you mind playing in severe cold? Love to play in a championship game. Schedule whatever you want. We'll be there. Look, he almost broke character there at the very end. Bill you saw a little he, smirk. Speaking see, of someone that doesn't freestyle you saw at little, the press conferences. You, you saw a little smirk of him. Like playing championship game. Yeah, put it wherever. There is no yeah. coach in the history of this game that is better at preparing for cold weather. In the last two years, they've practiced indoors three times. So this coach understands the type of weather you have to be able to. And uh, remember during the regular season, the Matt coach. Matt Patricia. Matt Patricia in Detroit. He got killed for it. So the Belichick way, it only works in New England because other guys try to do it. People are like, you don't know what you're talking so about. Patricia, they had three consecutive <laughs> dome games. And, and he's he had his team practice outside and people made fun of him. Like, I, I didn't defend Matt Patricia on much. Most notably, that silly pencil when he has a laminated sheet <laughs> that of paper. That bothers you so but much. It's just useless. But he, he, guess what? If you're the Lions, the big games you're going to play one day are going to be in Chicago, in Green Bay, potentially in January in the playoffs. You hope. You want your team conditioned for it over time. Like, this is a smart thing that Belichick has done. That's a Parcells thing. Oh, okay, smart thing that Belichick learned from Parcells. Yeah. All right, time smart for smart people learn from other smart people. Nick, take some notes. Stories to start your morning. Rockets fell to the Nets 145 142 last night despite a season high 58 points from James Harden, breaking his previous season high set, oh, last game when he scored 57 points. Nick, what do you make of Harden's performance in the loss to the Nets? He's been the best player in the league this year. At this point, it's by a considerable margin. He's setting records that I did not think were reachable. He is the only person on these lists he's joining is Wilt, and Wilt has his own section of the record book. He's scored 55 in back-to-back -back games. Hmm? Only player to do that since Wilt, and in both of these games, zero of his 31 made baskets were assisted. That is impossible, and it speaks to what a burden is on his shoulders right now. Oh, it's a perfect storm. The NBA, the new rules, no one's playing any defense. It's like pick up basketball. Basketball. Go to Lifetime Fitness. You want to see what the NBA is like? Man, go to Lifetime. Shoot your J. Work on your offense. Now, it's a perfect storm. Chris Paul's hurt, so his usage rate is up. Capella is now being out. They need this, but I believe it will hurt them in the postseason. James Harden, the rest of his career, it should be about what he accomplished in the postseason, but it's going to be regular season. He'll be MVP again. The Warriors won again last night. They beat the Pelicans 147 to 140. Steph Curry was incredible. 41 points, nine three-pointers. And then they get Boogie back tomorrow night. After the game, Draymond Green said all hell's about to break loose. Nick? Is he right? I mean, I think it might have broke loose a couple nights ago when they scored 89, Steph, Clay, and KD combined. When Clay, a few uh, about a week ago, got his shot back. Like that, that's all this team needs. Boogie's going to just be an added compliment to the best team in the league. But yeah, all hell's going to either continue to break loose in a good way or the outlier factor that maybe Boogie messes this thing up. I do not think that's going to happen. This seems probably about to reel off 28 of 31, something like that. Yeah, they're catching fire. Fire. They got just enough focus to be able to get through the regular season, but it's all about the postseason. Also, let's see how the Warriors starting on Friday when Boogie comes back. How much of a conscious effort? It was a conscious effort to get Clay out of that shooting slump. It was a conscious effort to Steph when he came back from his injury to get back right back on the MVP level he was playing at. Let's see if these other superstars, how conscious they are of getting Boogie involved in this offense. Back to the AFC Championship game now. Pats, Chiefs, not a lot has gone wrong for Patrick Mahomes this year. 50 touchdowns, over 5,000 yards, and a likely MVP. But the Chiefs' Week 6 loss to the Patriots has certainly not sent well with the Kansas City quarterback. 
we didn't feel good. I mean, we, we th especially me and, and the team, I felt like we didn't, didn't play our best, uh, or especially early in the game. And when you play teams of, of this caliber, you play teams with this much history of knowing how to win and capitalizing on people's mistakes. I mean, you can't come back and win games like that. And uh, it was shown uh, that game. And so for us, we have to learn from that, know that we can't make those mistakes. We, we have to come out with our best, best effort from the beginning of the game all the way through the end. And it's going to be a, a dogfight for the entire game if you want to try to come out with a win. Nick, what would you make of what Mahomes had to say? I think it's exactly what the Chiefs coaches or people rooting for the Chiefs would want to hear him say because I think it's going to be very difficult for the Chiefs to lose this game if they don't lose the turnover battle. If they play the Patriots even in the plus minus or certainly if they actually win the plus minus, I think they're better. We know how dominant that offense has been all year and how solid the defense has been at home in that building. I think the clearest path for a Patriot victory is what happened in the first game. Mahomes makes one bad mistake in the first half and the defense makes one great play in the first half, the Dante Hightower pick, and the Ch Chiefs have two early turnovers. Patriots did have a turnover themselves, a Tom Brady strip sack, but they lost, the Chiefs lost the plus minus by one. They lost the game on a last second field goal. I, this is not a game that I think Patrick Mahomes has to take a bunch of big chances. I think they are going to be able to move the ball down the field on the Patriots. That doesn't mean he doesn't throw deep to, Ty to Tyree Kill, but throwing into double coverage in the end zone, as he did on that terrible throw right before the end of the first half in this first matchup, that's what he has to avoid. Tr making sure he doesn't put the ball on the ground like he did a couple times against the Rams. That's what he has to avoid. If he avoids that and they don't have some disaster in the special teams games, a muff punt, something like that, I would be very surprised if the Chiefs lose. So that is where it's on Patrick Mahomes, not only to play well, but to play smart. Those to me, those comments say to me, he knows that. I think Patrick Mahomes learned an awful lot from week, the week number six um, loss to New England. Um, I think more importantly, um, there's a couple of things he learned. He learned that if the game is close, and they give the ball to number 12, he will drive them down and win. Yep. So I think he understands that my decision making, especially in a game of this magnitude, it becomes very important. From a positive standpoint, I know Patrick Mahomes watched that film, and man, he had guys running wide open. So people won't look at it. People are like, oh, he lost the game. Oh, his bad memories. No, there's a bunch of that game where he had great memories. So he'll know. I'm going to have some guys open. I got to be on top of making the right throws, making the right decisions, getting the ball to the right guys. But there are going to be a handful of plays that Patty Mahomes is going to have to do what has made him the best player in the NFL this year. And Nick, this might surprise you. Patty Mahomes got to take some chances, man. You can't come in this game playing conservative because that is the typical thinking. All oh, play conservative, play scared. Well, that's not Patty Mahomes. You have to be yourself. Now, in that high wire act, you know, because there ain't no safety you pick net. your spots. You got to be able to pick your spots and you have to play aggressive. I hope he takes that from the first meeting because that other guy, he's not playing conservative. He is trying to stick a dagger through the heart of the Kansas City Chiefs, and I think Patty Mahomes understands that. The combination of Patty Mahomes and Andy Reid, I believe, becomes very, very important in Patty Mahomes pulling the trigger because I believe Andy Reid, he's a coach that teaches that compared to not lose the game. Patty Mahomes go win the game. I just hope that it is impressed upon Patrick Mahomes the value in this game of retaining possession, I don't just mean in turnovers, I mean in first downs. There were spots in that Patriot game and in the Rams game, even as well as they move the football, where it's third and four, he has rolled out. He can run for the first down and get a new set of downs, and instead he throws the ball downfield. Mm -hmm. Like, you just keep move, keep the Pats offense off the field. Give your team another chance on first down to make the huge play instead of trying to make it on third down when you can just run for a first down. His legs can be a huge weapon in this game. All right, let's move on to the Boston Celtics now. Kyrie Irving had a great game last night, 27 points.